Hi everyone, Arlen here. Welcome back to my Country Craft Corner. How in the world are you guys doing today? Happy Monday, everyone. I hope that all is well with everyone. I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, this is actually Saturday when I'm doing this recording, and you may see me in the same outfit through the next couple of videos because I'm going to try to do some videoing today because it is a gorgeous day out, and I think I want to work on my cozy corner that will go up on Thursday. Anyway, just a little reminder to those of you subbies who have not sent me your picture yet. I need, I need it this Wednesday, July the 11th. Just one picture, please. If you have more than one corner, you can send me more than one picture. Uh, but <clears throat> I think I've decided regardless of how many pictures I have, I'm going to go ahead and make you a standalone video, subbies. It may be pretty short, but that's okay. Right now, I think I've got 10 or 11 of you guys participating. Uh, and then whatever else I get between now and then, I'll make up that video and uh, we'll have a subbies cozy summer cozy corner video. I'm so excited. Anyway, I'm yammering. Today I'm gonna to be making a 12 loop funky bow. So this may be a bow that would be something for a beginner funky bow maker to try to make. I'm only gonna be using three different types of ribbon and as I say, making 12 loops. So, you know, it may be something to try for one of you guys. <laughs> All right, I'm also gonna be tweaking a little arrangement that I showed in my live, for those of you who are with me on my live, in my live on Friday, I showed a little arrangement that I got to go with my new mailbox cover, which is this. <clears throat> it may look a little Americana, but I like it, and I think it's gonna go well for the rest of the summer until I change things out for fall. And I have, I made an arrangement out of a little tin that I have here, had here for years. Somebody asked me in my live about that, by the way. And I've had that tin for literally almost two decades. I don't even know where I purchased it, honey. Whoever asked me that, I, my apologies. I did not see your question in my live. So I did want to uh, say that about this tin. I don't know where I got it. It's been a long time since I got it. But anyway, I'm gonna turn my camera around. My iPhone X, by the way, is what I'm using, and it's working great. I love it, oh my goodness. I feel so lucky to have it. So anyway, I'm gonna turn it around and point it down, and we're gonna get started making this funky bow. First, I'm gonna cut my ribbons, so I'll do that, and then I'll be back to make a funky bow. strips at 20 inches. I'll explain that in just a second, but first I want to show you how I dovetail the ends, which dovetailing just simply means to give your the edges of your ribbon, the ends of your ribbon, which will be the, the tails, uh, a finished look. And what I do is I turn it in half lengthwise. I just pile them all on top of one another. Turn, uh, fold it in half lengthwise, and then I go to the edge and I cut up toward the fold. A lot of people cut down from the fold. I cut up from the fold. <laughs> you can do it with this one too. And there we go. All ready to make this bow. Okay, now I the reason I cut all of these strips at 20 inches was because I want to have five inch tails. So I need 10 inches of ribbon just for, to give me five inch tails. And then I need another 10 inches to pull together to make a five inch loop. So therefore I need 15. In reality, we just fold it in half and pinch it together at the 15 or the five inch mark. So, how I'm gonna make this one, since it is an even number loop, first time through the pattern with all the loops pointing up, up from center, my thumb being center. The next time through the pattern, I'm gonna point it, the loops down, and then the next time I'm gonna point them up. 
So take one at a time, obviously. Find my five inches, pinch together right at that spot, and then go to that back tail and twist it forward. Even though this looks like it's double-sided ribbon, it sometimes is texturally different. This one really isn't, but it also helps to separate them too. So here we go, whoops. There we go. First three loops. And go behind and twist. Okay, next time, your second time through. Actually, I'm gonna be going through this pattern four times. This time I'm gonna turn it down from center, center being my thumb, and twist. There we go. Down. And down. Okay. Just do this over and over and over again as we make our way through all of the strips. Line it up this time as we start with our third time through the pattern and twist. One more time through the pattern. I'm going to point it down. Point that loop down from center. And that pipe cleaner across the top and pull it around to the back. Use the hand that you're holding the loop shut with as resistance. Pinch all those loops together. Get this hand up really as close as you can to the bow and twist. And there we go. And then, as I always say, the most important part of any craft bow is the fluffing. So take some time to fluff, fluff, fluff. Okay, the last thing I want to do, you can see with it being the tails being shorter, but they kind of naturally come up and mingle in with the loops, which is absolutely fine, and that's really what I want them to do. I do take some time to separate them out sometimes. And of course I'm smushing all the the uh, fluffing that I just did. I also will fluff it more once I get it on the mailbox and get these loops exactly, I'll position them exactly how I want them out there. I think I want the red and the blue to be more prominent than I do the, the uh, burlap-y color. But the reason I added this one, can you see the color of the lantern there 
and it's kind of a yellowy cream there. And I added that color into the bow and I'm going to add that color into that arrangement in just a second. I have some of those flowers. So let me pick which, I think I'm gonna use the blue polka dotted one. Piece of ribbon, I need a pretty good long piece to tie into the back of this bow and so that I can tie this onto my mailbox. Much like I do with my lanterns, I do the same thing with my mailbox. I just put a long piece, find the middle, put it right side down, right and snug it right down into the pipe cleaner pretty tightly. Because I wanna be able to pull, when I pull this around my mailbox, I wanna be able to pull this bow in really tight to kind of smoosh all that in the back so that the bow lays up nicely against the mailbox. You'll see what I mean. Well, those of you who have seen my mailbox, you know what I'm talking about. So, anyway, so there we go. That's ready to go, pretty much. And I'll, as I, again, I'll finish tweaking it once I get it up onto the mailbox. I think it looks super cute with that. <laughs> all right, now all I wanna do here is just add some of this color in because I know out there right now, I have some of this color Gerber Daisies out there already in the back of the trough. So I know that color is already pulled in out there. So I'm just gonna simply just poke a couple of these in here just to bring out this color, you know? No big deal. And this was really easy to make. It was just a matter of me, you know, kind of arranging just some flowers to, you know, my eyes liking. And, you know, anybody can do this, you guys. Anybody can. You just have to try it. You have to give yourself, have confidence in yourself and trust your eye. Your eye knows what's pretty and what isn't, you know, and what looks nice and what doesn't. Just trust yourself. You can do it, I know you can. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Put one back here and that should do it. I have one back here. Okay, and I am gonna spray Never Wet on this. I can't help, I didn't even think, I should have put some stones in the bottom of this before I made all this up. I didn't even think about that. I'm not gonna worry about water getting in it. None of this, all of this is used materials, except for this, and I can always repaint it if I need to, but I'm not real concerned about any of this decor, to be honest with you, it's all old. It's all been reused five billion times, literally. These flowers I've had, I don't even know, you guys, over five years. So if it does happen to, you know, look a little worn or whatever after a couple of months being out there, it's not going to worry me so much if I need to, you know, replace the flowers in this. And I think the tin, it might get a little rusty, but we'll see. We'll see what happens here. I'm not going to worry about it, though. I like it. This is what I want to use. So... There we go. So now I'm gonna head on out to the mailbox. And you know what else I'm gonna grab? I have that little bicycle that's just kind of a tealy color, but there's a little bit of that, kind of a hint of that running through this, kind of in the window and stuff. And there's a little bit of green in the florally. I'm gonna put that bike out there. Hopefully it won't get stolen. I don't think it will. We've never really had any trouble with anything being taken. Hopefully it won't. Uh, but I am gonna put it out there because I think it'll look cute. So. I'm going to gather everything up, grab my snippers, because I need to uh, snip that, uh, I have a birdhouse out there right now. I'm going to put this together, and when I come back, I will show you the finished product out there. <laughs> Be right back. Okie dokie, everyone. Here I am, back, and there's that mailbox cover. And that funky bow, it's looking good. It's really buggy out here right now, so if I squeal, you'll know why. <laughs> and there's my little canister with a little flower arrangement. And I just arranged some flowers around it, no biggie, with my solar 
mason jar there that still comes on every evening. You can see the back of it here. I did decorate the back of it just a little bit. That's how I tied it on there, tied on the bow. But it looks really cute. And then I added just this bicycle pick. You know, it's in the ground. So, and then I have the hanging birdhouse. Chris actually put a coat of white spray paint on that for me. It was looking pretty tired. So he just spray painted it for me. This is a sign that I got from piperglassics.com years and years ago when we still lived in our other house. And it came with a, a different kind of hanging contraption that I had hung off of my front porch in the other house. But I don't use that hanger anymore. And I just, we just put in some little toggle screws or whatever you call them and I just replace that sign with every every month pretty much or with every season and there's the house back there through the trees you can hardly see it but that's it that's gonna be my mailbox decor for the rest of the summer and of course I have my never wet here and this is from rust-oleum never wet for fabric I do it on my funky bows but I also spray it on all of my flowers too. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a good dousing all the way around. There we go. That should keep it nice. And that'll be it for this video. I hope that all is well with everyone. And I hope that uh, no one is suffering with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain. And if you are, I hope that there is somebody there with you, helping you through each day, getting you through each day as very best as you can. I hope that there's nothing weighing on anybody's mind or heart, pulling your attention away from where it should be or where you want it to be. And with that, I'll just say I love y'all to bits. And I keep y'all in my thoughts and prayers all the time. Remember, in crafting, there are no mistakes, only unique creations. <laughs> Until next time, y'all take good, good care. Mwah! Bye-bye.